This call is now being recorded. Okay, so good morning. Today, we are going to discuss um, revenue management cycle. There are many components to implementing a successful revenue management culture and process in a hotel. For the sake of clarity, our discussion will focus around four main points. First, forecasting demand. Second, optimizing demand. Third, controlling demand. And lastly, monitoring demand. These four components can be put together to form a revenue management cycle. We will examine each of the component part of the cycle in the following sections to see how they interact and how their cycle can be used to provide revenue management guidelines leading to improved performance. Okay. When we say forecasting demand, it requires a good demand forecasting because it is the key aspect of revenue management. This is achievable through the improvement in the demand forecast to be used as inputs to the inventory allocation process that translate directly into increased revenue in the form of higher average rate per customer and better utilization of the demand. In other words, good forecasting facilitates the denial of low-rated reservations when one knows that higher rated demand will materialize later. Example, um, getting longer lengths of stay with lower rates, which help cover shoulder dates. In some hotels, they will allow longer lengths of stay even if lower rate na siya, just to cover up those dates na walay reservations or walay naka-occupy. Okay? So, a potential side benefit of developing a good demand forecasting capability for revenue management is that the resulting room volume forecast often can be put to good use elsewhere in hotel as well. Example for this one are those kind of mga functions uh, such as supply ordering and staffing can be often more optimally planned. Of course, with access to the detailed room and guest forecast that is produced by revenue management process. Another thing is that demand forecasting for the revenue management process entails a few unique challenges that must be addressed for a program to be successful. This technique uh, used by revenue management continue to attract a considerable and ongoing level of investment. It attracts investment because they have seen na successful nisha, and then they have seen that the hotel generate a revenue. Okay, so some of the techniques being used is offering discounted rate especially if layo pa ang peak season and offering higher rates if peak season na especially if na analay usa or duha ka room na available acquiring good demand forecasting will not happen all the time there would be a time that you are uncertain on the decisions and forecast so how are you going to address these uncertainties okay so to address this, you have to minimize the uncertainty by producing the best possible forecast of demand and its degree of unpredictable variation. You have also to acknowledge the uncertainty and reflecting it in the decision analysis process. So you have to reflect and analyze in order to come up with the best solution. Uncertainty about the future demand for the inventory that gives revenue management its revenue leverage and makes it a challenge. So it is the management of this uncertainty that is the essence of revenue management itself. So in order to have a good demand forecasting, we need information and data in order to know kung asa tamo apply and ang a certain nga technique. Okay, so we need to forecast data. So forecasting data, it is a raw data required to produce 
forecast that comes from the transaction system nga gi-own sa hotel or panagiya sa hotel. Uh, this could be their PMS or property management system. In other case, um, it could be the, the central reservation system. So what data need to be extracted from the system in question? So what's sa nga data ang atong kinahanglan in order for, for us to kind of ma-extract nato siya gigan sa system? So best example for this one is the historical data. If that certain data is available, then it can be used to form the basis of future forecast. However, we have to, to question if that certain data or is future performance likely to resemble past performance. So we have to bear in mind that question because as market and business conditions change, so does the validity of using historical data in the forecasting process. Okay, so when we look at historical data, it is important to identify and in some cases we have to isol isolate those as uh, special events because it may have influenced performance and patterns. Special events such as Christmas will repeat again in the future. However, other special events such as weather-related peaks might not occur in any predictable fashion. Business practices can significantly affect the way that historical data looks. For example, if in the past no-show bookings had been checked in the PMS, so rather than going through an automated no-show process, the level of occupancy would be inflated. Then the implication to the way that the data look needs to be understood. Even considering the above points, it is still likely that historical data will yield valuable information for the production of future, future forecasts, especially from the perspective of day of week patterns and seasonality. Okay, so the key to getting more from data is consistency. Consistency in the application of the business practices that influence it. If this are if this are understood and implemented systematically, understanding the information that the data contain become much easier. So here, nanatay data. And then, how will the data be extracted? So saan man siya pag-extract? So first, we need to determine whether, whether the data will be accessed through using and manipulating an existing report or by creating a report that contains just the data points required. Okay, so where will the data be housed and utilized once it has been extracted? So best example is the Excel. We can use the Excel or similar spreadsheet that has been designed to take the data extra and then allow for additional inputs to be added, such as um, additional number of rooms that are expected to be sold to produce the forecast. After uh, finding out where it could be extracted, how often will the task be repeated? Okay, so it depends on the method of extraction, okay? the method of instruction, the data housing, and so forth. The frequency of the exercise will need to be determined. Whatever level of frequency is decided upon, it will be important to maintain cycle in a consistent fashion. And lastly, what kind of skill exists in the organization to produce and utilize the historical data? So, unsaman. Okay? So, before going to the effort of extracting vast amount of data, it is important to decide who will be looking at the information and what they need to do to it to make it useful, okay? So depending on the amount and type of data being considered, the level of spreadsheet type skills and the data interpretation skills available should be examined also. So as um, not to get into an analysis paralysis situation in which nothing useful is actually being produced. So, mauna siya ang process in forecasting data. You need to identify the data and then, unsa sa na siya pag-extract, asa na siya ibutang, 
kapila na siya buhaton, and then the level of skills or unsang skills of organization ang gamiton in order to utilize the certain data or the historical data. Okay. Aside from forecasting data, we have also to forecast granularity. Okay? So, in order to forecast demand and to forecast fair granular level, it should be based on market segmentation, length of state, and room type by the use of automated solutions. Okay? Pero, if a forecast is being produced manually, it is important to recognize that the more granular forecast become, the more time it will take to extract and manipulate the data to produce the final forecast numbers. Consideration also should be given to the fact that splitting the forecast into many small segments will make forecasting accuracy more difficult to achieve. For example, if a specific market segment has been seen to produce anywhere from 0 to 10 rooms, it may be hard to predict future performance. If the same market segment were to be combined with other market segments that are used for several type of business, Analysis may show that the combination of market segments typically produces between 50 and 70 room per night. Okay, so by creating a forecast that combines similarly behaving segments, a greater level of accuracy will be achieved as there will be more data available to judge and forecast what is typically likely to occur. The same principle can be applied when looking at data by room type. In many cases, what is really important is looking at the demand at the room class level. Okay, so what follows are some factors that can be examined to help decide the level of granularity for the forecast. The easiest way to examine these patterns is to take some historical hotel occupancy data over the period of a stay, a month, and to break it up by groups of market segments or channel. Okay, so channel, nga imuha pong mahunahunaan na probably same lang sila ang behavior. Okay, so the first factor that can be examined to help decide the level of granularity for the forecast is the day of week pattern. So here, you can examine the way that each of the segments or groups of segments perform through the week. The typical percentage of the overall business is the selected segments that stays on each night of the week can be calculated and then used to distribute future anticipated volume of business by day of week. Another factor is booking based pattern. So here, it is one of the key elements of forecasting uh, knowing when to expect bookings to materialize. It may be a well-known fact that very little corporate transient business books a year in advance. However, what may not be known is the typical percentage of corporate business that books between 28 and 21 days prior to arrival. This fact alone is important because Appreciating when business actually starts to book will assist in determining how far in advance of the day of arrival restrictions should be placed. Okay, so muna siya. Examination of booking-based data can lead to some surprising results. Okay, a general feeling that may be the most of the transient business books within the last 14 days and restrictions are applied within this window accordingly. The data may show that although this is true, a significant number of bookings are still taken. Okay. Okay. So here, the graph below illustrates a booking history curve for a specific day. The curves were calculated by simply counting the number of rooms sold for each of the market segments analyzed at each point in time prior to the day of arrival and plotting them on a graph. Points worth noting are as follows. The demand peaks. So here in the graph, you can see the demand peaks pointing some arrows. So one is the highest nga time or muna siya ang demand peak. So, that is at the point in time at which the highest number of reservation was on the books. 
are at different points prior to the day of arrival for each of the market segments. The drop in the curve show after that day of arrival reflects the number of no-shows. So here in the graph, you can see the kind of borderline, the color red. So ang drop, Anna, after Anna, ang drop, Anna, muna siya nagpakita sa no-show ng mga a reservation. Okay? So, market segment 3 shows no increase in the number of rooms sold after the 13th day prior to the arrival point. This could have been because the rates in the market segment were being controlled through revenue management activity. Okay? So, looking at the patterns for one day is not enough to use for, for future forecasting or even to be able to draw any conclusion. If this type of data collection is put into place systematically over time, the revenue management team will be able to consolidate the data to create a picture of the average curve over. Okay. So this information then will provide the team with a greater understanding of the way that business actually books, which in turn will help with future uh, forecasting and decision making. So another factor is length of stay patterns, okay? So understanding the typical length of stay patterns for different types of guests is the key to being able to deploy appropriate restrictions, okay? So again, granularity can become an issue here. However, even knowing the typical length of stay for transient guests as a whole by day of arrival can assist greatly in the forecasting, optimization, and control process. Another one is cancellation and no-show. Okay, so it is the ability to overbook appropriately will largely depend on the ability for forecast the likely cancellation and no-show patterns from the available data. Collecting no-show data is relatively easy as the data point is always the day of arrival. However, the cancellation patterns are more difficult to extract as a cancellation can take place at any time between the booking date and the day of arrival. The easiest way to collect this information is to begin looking at the number of booking taken within 45 days prior to arrival period for a range of dates into the future. If time and resources permit, this can be done by market segment or by group of market segment. At a minimum, a differentiation should be made between group and transient bookings. Okay? And the last factor is rate paid. Okay? So in addition to the other patterns mentioned, it is also important to consider the patterns regarding the rate paid, expanding some of the previously mentioned analysis points to create. For example, a revenue booking history of rate by length of stay type analysis can again help the team understand the dynamic of business. So aside from forecasting granularity, we have also to forecast frequency. So the frequency at which forecast can be produced will largely depend on the resources available to take, manipulate, and understand the data. There may be a key business requirement to produce, for example, a 90-day forecast once a month, 28-day forecast once every other week, or 14-day forecast once a week. Producing accurate forecast manually will always be a time-consuming process. However, the greater the understanding of the booking patterns that exist for the hotel, the easier it should be estimated or forecast what is likely to happen in the future. Unconstrained demand. Okay. A commonly used term in the revenue management world is unconstrained demand. A quick way to understand about the unconstrained demand for your hotel is to imagine that you could accept each and every reservation for a busy day in the future without any concern for the number of rooms that you actually have available. So if you were available to accept all reservation requests, how much dem demand would this represent? So pila, pila man ang demand, okay? So whatever the answer may be, you can think of it as an approximation of the unconstrained demand. 
in reality, the capacity of the hotel has to influence the number of reservation that you can take and the number that you are finally able to accommodate. This can be regarded as the constrained demand. On low demand days, the unconstrained demand may be equal to the constrained demand, as you will take and be able to accommodate all the demand that exists. On busy days, and even days in which the hotel does not end up quite filling, you can be pretty sure that the unconstrained demand is greater than the constrained demand, which you will be able to actually measure at the end of the day. So here... One way of gauging unconstrained demand for a day in the past was to look and turn down our denial data to add, to add those data to the number of rooms that were actually sold. Even though this gave some indications of the level of unconstrained demand, care should be taken with this approach as denial data are often quite misleading. Okay, so for example, Okay, my example ta. A guest may call to make a reservation but be denied because the hotel is full. The same guest may then get a travel agent to call but the hotel is still full and so the travel agent call is denied too. The guest may try themselves the next day and again be denied. However, when they call again the day after the booking is taken, as there is typically no way of linking a denial record to a specific date, adding the denial data together and then adding this information to the total room sold will overestimate demand. The guest only wanted one room. Denial information can give you a great insight into your, your demand patterns, but to rely on it is to assess unconstrained demand levels can lead to incorrect assumptions being made. Okay, so on na siya. Uncertainty or volatility in demand. So as mentioned earlier, grouping similarly behaving segments of business together for forecasting purposes makes forecasting a little easier. When doing this, you can then start to analyze the differences in volume of rooms produced. For example, similar days of the week to gauge how predictable the demand is. If sometimes 50 rooms are booked for the selected groupings, other times 10 and other times 100, then you could conclude that this type of demand is volatile. In the same way, analysis of another groupings of segments may show that on non-busy days, the typical number of rooms sold is between 20 and 25, meaning that the demand is more stable and therefore more predictable siya. It's because dug old man ang numbers. Unlike the first example, dag ko kaayo ang yung difference. Diba? So in the same way, that it is impossible to consistency and accurately predict the price of a stock. It is impossible to consistently and accurately forecast demand and occupancy. That being said, there are things that we can look at to help us forecast and demand more accurately. So, naagya po siya yung mga uh, kailangan ni study how or analyze. So, just take note that in doing this analysis, you should look at non-busy nights to ensure that low production numbers were not caused by a lack of availability. Now, let's proceed to the optimizing demand. Okay, so once you have a forecast, you can determine on which day it is likely that you will have to turn down demand. If you are able to do some basic unconstraining using the techniques already discussed, you then can decide which element of demand you should accept to maximize occupancy and rate. Filling the hotel on busy nights is obviously important. However, if you make optimal use of the demand that you are forecasting, you also should be able to affect the occupancy on the shoulder nights by deciding to tactically deploy length of stay control. Okay, so optimizing demand, it is the brain of any revenue management system. It could be automated or manual. This is a place where all of the information is assimilated and analyzed in order to decide which bookings to accept and which bookings to reject. Okay. 
so here so all of the following issues um, need to be addressed in the design of any system some of the issues are more important than others not all of the issues will be relevant to every hotel okay so manasha optimizing rate mix the first objective of revenue management is to allocate rooms among rate classes to maximize total expected revenue or profits in the face of uncertain levels of demand for your rooms. For example, if we reserve a hotel room for exclusive use of a potential customer and has a probability of get of 70%, and then the room price is 100 pesos per room, example lang niha, and then it would gain an expected revenue of 70 pesos. Okay, so let's face with same situation 10 times. So we would expect that the customer would appear uh, seven times. Okay, seven times she will appear and then pay us 100 pesos for each day. And then on three of the 10 occasions, the demand would fail to materialize and we would get nothing as the room reserved in anticipation of the demand materializing would go empty. So we would collect a total of 700 pesos for the 10 rooms of an average of 70 pesos per room. Okay, so suppose another customer appeared and offered us 60 pesos for the room. So it would be in cash or on the spot. And then another customer came and then offered siya og ka ng 80 pesos in cash right away. So, kung saan nga decision yung buhaton? So, the decision for the first customer is no. Nganong no man? Nganong no man ang first nga decision sa usaka customer? It's because as long as we're able to keep a long-term perspective, um, we know that a 100% probability of getting 60 pesos gives us an expected revenue of only 60 pesos. So over 10 occurrences, we would only get 600 pesos versus the 700 pesos that we would make if we held out for the 100 peso guest. To make use a common term, this is a difference between the bird in the hand, which is ang katong 60 pesos nga nagi offer sa guest, and then the bird in the bush, which is ang ato ang uh, 100 pesos nga rate. Okay, so how about the second customer? What would be our decision? So it is yes. Ano yes man siya? Because the expected revenue is greater than that of the potential from the 100 peso customer in the bush. Over 10 occurrences, we would get 800 pesos in this situation versus 700 pesos that we would get by saying no and holding out for the 100 peso guests. Mo na siya ang mga decisions or mga optimization in the rate mix. So. It, we have to take note for this one. We should never sell a room for less than we expect to receive for it from another customer. But if we can get more for it, the extra revenue goes right to the bottom line. Okay. Now let's define or let's try to understand the estimating expected revenue. Okay. Obviously, the key to effective revenue management is the accurate estimation of the expected revenue of each room in a hotel. After all, neither occupancy nor average rate alone can create a strong and healthy business. The focus has to be on rev par and thus revenue and thus revenue. So one key principle of revenue management is that as the level of availability capacity increases, the marginal revenue from each additional room declines. If you offer only one room for sale, the probability of selling it is very high and it is very unlikely that you will have to offer a discount to sell it. Thus, the expected revenue estimate for that first room will be quite high. 
However, with each additional room that you offer for sale, the probability that it will be sold goes down a little. So, moobos na siya. Until you reach the point where you are offering so much capacity that the probability of selling the last additional room is close to zero. So, even if imo na siyang ipanghatag, mabot na ka sa point ng imo na siyang ipanghatag. So, at this point, the expected revenue estimate for that room is close to zero. Economists call this phenomenon the expected marginal curve or expected marginal revenue curve or EMR, which looks approximately like this. Okay. So the exact shape of the curve is determined from the probability of achieving each level of demand and the rate structure. Values also can be interpreted as of the marginal rooms. They represent the alternative revenue opportunities that are foregone when we sell the marginal room. Okay? So now let's apply the EMR to the optimized rate mix. So once the EMR curve has been calculated for all of the available rooms offered for sale, the information stored in the curve can be used in one of two different ways to control the mix of guest by rate class. So first, we have to use the curve to ration rooms between market segments or rate class. So in this method, which has historically been used in the travel industry, the EMR curve is employed as follows. Okay, so rooms are reserved incrementally for customers in the highest rate class one at a time until the AMR for the next room if reserved for a customer in this rate category is equal to or less than the next lower rate. Okay, so let's go back to our first example. If the full rate is 100 pesos, and our discount rate is 70 pesos, we would continue to reserve room for the exclusive use of customer in the 100 peso rate class until the probability of selling one room to such customers uh, drop to 70%. Okay, so mauna siya. Okay, uh, detailed man kaayo ang graph, no? And then, if that point was reached after reserving 10 rooms, for this exclusive use of customers in the 100 peso rate class, we would say that the protection level for the first rate class was 10 rooms. Okay, so the remaining rooms could be sold to customer in either rate class on the first come first serve basis. In essence, with this approach that you start on the left end of the EMR curve and move down to the right, reserving rooms until you reach the point of indifference. Okay, small okay. So, the second way to apply AMR principle to revenue management and the more direct and preferable method is referred to as opportunity cost approach. So, in this approach, the AMR value of the last room is applied directly to define the lowest acceptable price for the next rooms to be sold. As long as the rate requested is above the EMR opportunity cost, the sale is permitted. Each time of room is sold, the number of available rooms shrink by one and the EMR increases. In essence, you start at the right end of the EMR curve and move up to the left, selling rooms at discounted and shrinking the amount of capacity remaining available until the EMR for the remaining rooms reaches to the point of indifference. At that point, you would stop selling rooms at the discounted rate. So in our simple example, the result would be the same under either the rationing approach or the opportunity cost approach. You will end up selling the same number of full rate and discount rate rooms under either under those approach. 
and the resulting revenue will be identical. The opportunity cost approach is preferably because the complexities of real life revenue management situation can be much more simply, directly and intuitively incorporated into practical revenue management system under the opportunity cost approach. Okay, so understanding those things um, uh, faces a lot of challenges. So we have to optimize these challenges. And then one of the challenges in optimize, optimization is the frequency of revision. Okay, so once there is a problem or there is a kind of wrong input of data, we need to study, we need to analyze, and go back to where it went wrong. So, muna siya nga maghimo to ang mga lying revisions. But, through these revisions, uh, makita na to ang improvement, makita na to kung asa tanga area mo, mo adjust in order to, to, kanang makahatag bito siya result nga maayo. And then, also, it helps us improve it helped improve in the management. It helped improve in forecasting. It helped improve in optimizing the path, optimizing demand. And this improvement will lead to kind of more revenue to the hotel and will lead to the kind of profit na. So, land of stay effects. If all hotel customers stayed only one night, the basic revenue management equation would be as it is described in the preceding six section. However, in real life, hotel customers may stay one night or they may stay several weeks. This fact adds a whole new level of complexity to the problem. To maximize your revenue, you must now ask yourself this question. Um, am I better of renting this room for one night at the fall rock rate or renting it for three nights at a 50 percent discount okay so let us take a simple example here a hotel is down to its last two rooms for this coming monday and tuesday but there are plenty of rooms available the rest of the week okay so customer a need a room for monday night and would pay the full rate of 100 per night customer b needs a room for Tuesday night and also would pay the full rate. Customer D would stay all week and pay the week rate of 300 pesos. That would be 50 pesos per night. And customer C wants a room both Monday and Tuesday and qualifies for a two-day promotional rate of 75 pesos per night. So which combination of booking should be accepted to produce the highest revenue. So, asa man ani ang inyohang pili on. Okay? So, we have to choose customer A and customer B. Why? Ngano customer A and customer B man? Because, um, Because um, their 100 peso rate is equal to the uh, 100 peso opportunity cost. Okay? So, wala man ka, hindi man tawalugi, kaya ang rate is the same man lang, wala may adjustment. Okay? So, here, we have to reject customer C. Because his, 100, uh, his or her 150 pesos two-day rate is less than the combination of Monday and Tuesday's opportunity cost. And we have also to accept customer D because his 350 per week rate exceeds the sums of weeks opportunity cost. Mona siya. So as we saw earlier, this is the correct choice of bookings to accept. In, it turns out that for every hotel, no matter how many rooms or rate classes, there is a unique set of EMR values that, if applied as opportunity cost, will cost you to accept the unique set of customers that will yield you to the most revenue. So, Monisha. So, this is based on the land of stay effect. Okay. So, we have also in revenue management, um, 
we have also to identify the multiple distribution channel. Okay, so in hospitality, a successful revenue management strategy requires an efficient channel management strategy. It consists of maintaining rate pari parity and selling inventory at the highest possible rates while pushing reservation through the lowest cost channel. Okay, so this is very challenging task because it requires understanding of the wide array of distribution options. Like mga options kung unsa available nga model or sales model and then kung unsa output nila pag interact. Okay, so multiple distribution channel, kuana siya, it is the vehicle utilized to make a product or service available to the consumer. So, also, the internet distribution environment in particular is very dynamic, okay? So, the business models often change and there is a substantial amount of mergers and acquisitions among the major players. These companies interact with the customer in different ways, forming dynamic distribution arrangement and a complex network that makes tracking the utilization of some channels and costly and labor intensive. Sometimes there are so many intermediaries that the company lost the ability to track the source of the reservation. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> um, one of the multiple distribution channels is goodwill or reflecting subjective value. So, here, a revenue management system should have some mechanism that allows the yield manager to explicitly evaluate subjective or difficult to quantify consideration in an informed manner in reaching decisions about when to sell or not to sell a room. Suppose, for example, kind of nine and flash in your system, don't sell, muna siya signal, but the manager knows that this is an important client whose continued goodwill is worth a considerable amount of money. So to account for these cases, the system should be designed to quantify the immediate negative revenue implications of accepting the sale so that it can be balanced against future revenue considerations. Okay, so another example. If the system, system <laughs> can tell the revenue manager that accepting the sale will cause an expected revenue loss of 100 pesos, then the manager is now in much better position to make an informed decision. So, maona siya. So, okay. so, another one is sell up potential. So, here, over optimistic assessment of sell up potential is one of the greatest potential dangers in revenue management program. The overzealous application of bait and switch strategies can result in revenue management system program that loses money to the firm. Good. So in a property design revenue management program, the appropriate reflection of sell-up potential in the system has a relatively minor impact on inventory, allocation, and bottom line revenue. Most people are surprised to learn that the proper application of revenue management practices often results in significantly higher sales and revenue per unit of capacity, but lower revenue per customer. Okay, so you would follow up on this decision and and you have to compare it. Okay, so maana siya. Another one is contract or promotional in evaluation. So, sometimes competitive pressure will force you to enter into contract in which the customer would can guarantee access to any available rooms regardless of discount availability. Although, um, this last room availability agreements can erode the effectiveness of a revenue management program and should be avoided if all possible. There is a way to minimize their damage if you're stuck with them. You should forecast the demand for rooms 
pursuant to these contracts, and you have to remove the equivalent amount of available rooms for inventory before valuing the remaining capacity and establishing allocations or opportunity costs. Okay, so in this essence, you remove this class of demand from the equations, you remove the Mozilla, and then you have to optimize the remainder. So contracts with last room availability clause are much less likely to turn an economic profit than capacity control contracts. This is even more true if the contract provides guaranteed availability at the contracted rate. Okay, so another distribution channel is overbooking. So the hotel industry is plagued by the problem of no-show. People who book rooms but do not show up uh, use them to then often or refuse to pay for them. <clears throat> so the solution for this one is the guaranteed reservation. So the hotel um, program guaranteed reservation in an attempt to mitigate this problem. And then it compensates for no-show and cancellation. Hotels offer book their capacity, trading off the possibility of empty rooms if they don't offer book enough against the ill will and out of pocket compensation for customers that occurs when customers are walk, are walk or book out. Okay. So in the hotel industry, no shows rates often vary by rate class or market segment, day of week, season, and booking pace. Okay. So the cost of failing to honor a customer's booking, including both out-of-packet costs, such as cost compensation to walk, hotel customer, and a consideration <clears throat> of the potential loss of future in revenue from the disgruntled customer also must be calculated. So another one is pricing. So... When rate structure are flexible, the EMR values produced by the revenue management model itself. It can provide invaluable feedback to the rate setting process. So as long as discount pricing can be successfully limited to truly price sensitive market segments, um, price reduction that move a rate downward toward a low EMR will resort, result in increased revenue. When high practice sensitivity can be combined with the flexible to pursue involved peak or kind of mga off peak pricing strategies with numerous variations in prices by time period, revenue will, will be maximized by setting prices right at the level of the EMR. And lastly, best available rate or rate of the day program. So gone are those days when hotels could operate with a rack rate. Uh, corporate negotiation rates and some kind of mga promotional offers. The visibility into the hotel availability and pricing strategies offered by the internet means that the customer is often very well informed on the best rate that can be purchased in the location that they are looking for, and therefore hotels have to price in order to capture the demand that they need. Okay, so ultimately, what best available rate type? programs are setting out to do is to ensure that you maximize the revenue from the unqualified demand. So to do this, you have to ensure that you don't offer rates to the unqualified demand that will prevent you from capturing that amount of demand from this segment that you need not offering rates that you cannibalize your business. So generally speaking, the lower the rate, the more demand you will be able to capture. However, it is imperative that the impact of the best available rate on other rates is considered and you are not diluting revenue unnecessary. Okay, so now let's control demand. So this is the third factor or this is the third concept in revenue management cycle. Here, transient business, um, these are the reservation that needs to be controlled, okay? So this is broken down into two, strategic control and practical control. 
Okay, when we say strategic control, um, it can be defined as rules or criteria that are put in place to govern the conditions and availability of a right regardless of the specific date of arrival. Um, let's say Saturday night. So we could um, use strategy controls like um, rate only available for two guests can only book more than 21 days prior to arrival or can only be booked within 14 days or full non-refundable prepayment required at the time of booking. Okay, so mato siya yung mga, pwede nga mga strategy control nga gamiton. Okay, so sometimes strategy control refer to us ka ng mga fences. That is, they are put in place to target the rate of specific type of client and to prevent other clients who may be likely to pay more from booking. For example, if a discounted rate was fenced with a 21-day advance purchase and a full prepayment policy, corporate clients willing to pay more may be unwilling or unable to meet the criteria set. Another uh, restriction control is tactical control. It can be defined as restrictions that are applied to rates based on specific date of arrival. Tactically deployed controls that would be at work in addition to any specific control set on a date. Okay, sa mo na siya ang mga tactical control. These are kind of mga examples. So here, pwede ka gamiton in order to control the uh, mga tactical control kaning naasa restrictions um functionality because kaning ka tactical control these are used to change the availability of rates based on a condition that exists on and around certain days for example if our specific wednesday was forecast to be very busy a minimum length of stay required requirement of two nights could be put in place for all discounted rates or possibly for all rates except in the client requested a suite. Okay, so diba? Muna siya gamiton nga tactic o sa sa mga tactic. So, um, we have also to consider that in using tactical uh, control, naan na siya yung mga uh, control o naan na siya yung mga li limitations, okay? So, magdepende na siya sa duha kabuta. It could be nga, ang type of control available in the transaction system is used Okay, so unsa man na, na uh, control ang gamiton na kanang available sa transaction system or the amount of time available to deploy and update the control is of each system that are used to take reservation. So, ang time available, kung kanunsa na siya i-deploy and then kanunsa po ma-update ng certain nga control. Okay. Deploying restriction. So here, so na na siya yung mga common nga mga pitfall na kailangan bantayan when you deploy a restriction. So first, not deploying restrictions only enough in the booking cycle. So don't wait until last seven days if 40% of your booking materialized between 8 and 28 days prior to arrival or Deploying too many restrictions resulting in demand being denied, which in fact should be have accepted. And then lastly, not auditing the restrictions that have been put in place. So regularly check what is restricted in the BMS. So um, failing to do in the number three pitfall will result in the number two nga pit, nga pit, pitfalls, di ba? Okay, once you fail in auditing the restrictions that have been put in your system, then the possibility would be nga ka nang makadenied ka o demand na dapat unta i-accept to siya. So, muna siya yung mga kailangan nga bantayan. Okay? So, during special events, if as the date grows closer, the effectiveness and applicability of the controls and rates should be checked and verified in comparison to the reverse revised forecast and potentially to the action being taken by the competition. So here. So lastly, monitoring demand. So it is very important to monitor demand. Here, we're going to monitor the granularity. 
As with the production of the forecast themselves, the level of granularity at which you can monitor will depend on the time available. However, it is important to check the performance of your forecast to ensure that what you expect to happen is in fact happening. If it is not, you will need to revisit the optimization decisions that you made and the booking controls that subsequently applied. Okay, so if you have been able to um, calculate the booking phase curves, you can begin to compare those curves to what is actually happening. If you expected 20 bookings to have been taken for a group of market segments, then 14 days prior to arrival, you have in fact only taken uh, five bookings. It is time to examine the forecast and then optimize assumptions that you put in place for the day. Another one is forecast accuracy. So here, you have to assess the level of accuracy because it is very important. However, there are some points that you need to bear in mind. So here, it is generally easy to accurately forecast busy nights than quiet nights. So 100% forecast accuracy should not be your goal because if you forecasted 60% occupancy on a given night in the future 28 days, 14, day, 14 days out, etc., would you happier and better off if this what was actually achieved? Or if you put tactics in place to drive more demand and ended up with a 70% occupancy, the latter is most certain, certainly that the case, as with the first example, forecasting demand on busy nights may be much worse than on busy nights as the forecast produced may lead you to take actions to improve yourself wrong. So, maona siya. So, here, so that ends with our discussion on the revenue management cycle. So, it has a four components. First, forecasting demand. Here, so, we're going to kind of forecast demand. And in order to forecast demand, we need them some data. And this data, we could use historical data that needs to be extracted. And then how are you going to extract this data? Kapila siya mo extract And then unsang skills ang gamiton. Okay, so using those data, uh, using those uh, forecasting data, forecasting regularity, um, uh, forecast frequency, we will arrive to the good forecasting demand. Okay, and then next component is the optimizing demand so here we have discussed the emr the curve that shows asa dapat ang demand peaks um, it shows kung asa ang limitation sa uh, discounted rate and then unsa koy may tabo ato mga rooms nga wala ka offer of discount and then knowing all these things you have also to control the demand okay so after controlling the demand so, mag-monitor yata sa granularity and the accuracy. So, mo na siya ang revenue management process. So, magtuyok-tuyok lang na siya. And during those time, analyzing those things, it will come up into a revenue that in return, in the hotel industry, would gain profit. So, mo na siya. So, if you have any question, you can message me directly to my messenger account or you can email me kung asa inyong preferred nga mode of communication. And then, this will be the last topic that we are going to discuss because next week, tentative schedule for midterm. So, wala pa specific na day and time kung kanus a ang ato ang subject pagkandak sa midterm. So, if ever na ana, I will inform you the date and time and also kung sa nga type of exam. So for midterm, our coverage would be module 1 to module 4. Okay, so maona lang na siya. And then, kana lang. So for Wednesday, we will not meet. I will allocate that time para mag-study mo for your midterm. So study lang yun, study lang yun, and then read and read in order to understand sa mga topics. Okay, so kung naamoy mga wala na sabtan, basahan ninyo balik. Kung di good kaya, then uh, message me. Okay, so that would be all.
So thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless and keep safe.